everyone, and welcome to the Design Therapy, your creative community and outlet for all things creative. Today, we're going to talk about finding the artist within the graphic design industry. I am so excited to have my past coworker, lovely friend, and graphic designer here on the show today, Juliana from Indiana. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm enjoying this lovely Nashville weather. I know we're both located here in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Um, It's been kind of crazy. It's finally being able to get out and about and into the real world a little bit amid (laughs) COVID-19. I know. I love it. Finally. Uh But the weather's been so nice. It's been cool and not too hot. I I hope it just stays this way for a while because I know in Tennessee it gets real hot. Yeah. Way too hot. (laughs) (laughs) Who's that little friend you've got with you right there? got Merle he is well he's over there now you can hear him coming probably jingling (laughs) my pup Merle slash co-worker he's been you know with me every step of the way working from home so I love how we get new co-workers when we start working remotely I know he's been very happy I'm not sure what he's gonna do if and when we ever go back into the it'll be sad (laughs) I know where's my my buddy at I know (laughs) so well, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and how you became a graphic designer. So I've been doing this for about 13 years. Um, I started in college with a fine arts degree and then, you know, trying to figure out a way to still do art, but actually make money while doing art. So um, I've just always been an artistic person and kind of always knew that I wanted to do something with art. So, um, from there, I just kind of, um, what's up here? Um, started working as an in-house graphic designer and, um, just kind of fell into that job through mutual friends of my family. And I've worked as an in-house designer pretty much my whole career. Um, and then after moving to Nashville, got a job, um, another graphic design job where I've been working for about two years now where we met each other. I know. I miss you. I miss seeing you every day. I know. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) So what kind of industries have you worked in? I know that you've done a little bit of everything. You've had some apparel work. You've had, you know, the banking industry you're in now. Um, Yeah. What else have you worked in? Um, so furniture industry, um, I worked for a wholesale furniture company, um, for about seven years as their in-house graphic designer slash print production manager slash, you know, whatever else they need you to do. I'm sure a lot of in-house designers can relate that you are not only a designer, you're also an IT person and you're you're everything (laughs) administrative assistant and, you know, you're based, if you, especially where I worked, where I was the only one that did, um, graphic design, you know, you kind of just do a little bit of everything. Um, so from there, and then I went to the apparel industry and worked for a dancewear company, um, that made, um, dance, cheer, gymnastics. So that was a lot of fun. Um, very creative position. Um, and they did catalogs. That was kind of what they did about six a year. So a lot of catalog design layout, um, also screen print design, um, for their apparel lines. Um, and then, um, yeah, now in the banking, uh, financial tech industry. How have those industries, um, differentiated for you, you know, working in both, have you had to shift kind of your mindset and where you are creative in that sector? Yeah, I'd say for sure. Like the apparel industry is going to be, they're super creative. They're kind of up for anything. Um, scouring Pinterest for a few hours was totally, um, you know, (laughs) everybody's dream, everybody's dream. (laughs) Like you'd sit on Pinterest for, you know, inspiration and you'd feel like you're doing something wrong, but that was totally acceptable because you want to learn the new fashion trends and you want to be up on trend and all of that. So, um, that definitely is a little different furniture, you know, furniture was more of a production sort of, you know, they're kind of just set like, this is what we need. So Mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't the super creative um, aspect, but it was the other side, which I also enjoy, which is the production part, organization, managing things. um, Organization is so key. Oh my gosh. Yes. We have both learned that like our jobs cannot function if there's not a project management tool in in place and organization. (laughs) Yeah, I agree 100%. And if you're 
an unorganized designer, I would definitely suggest that you work on becoming organized because it not only helps your workflow as you're working, it'll just, it will help you so much in the long run to just stay on top of your projects. And that's kind of where I am in the financial tech industry. And with them, um, never working in banking, you have a lot to learn as far as, um, you know, what type of language you're going to use in your copy and what, what you can and can't say. So that was kind of, it has to be compliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As you know, so. Yes. I uh, don't, I know that language very well now. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Only by my house. I was like, I'm actually really, I, I worked in that industry for so long. And then I was like, I bought my house last year after I had left working with you guys. And I um, I was like, oh my gosh, I know what these terms mean. I'm not stupid. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you really, you know, you have to learn that. And as far as creativity goes, uh, it's kind of middle ground, I would say, from what I was doing in furniture to apparel. It's kind of that middle ground. It's not always super creative. There's room for projects and stuff as always, but yeah, like you said, staying within that compliance and what you can and can't do, you know, that that can box you in sometimes with things mm-hmm. that you can and can't do. How do you stay um, inspired every day? Like, where do you find your inspiration? Do you find it in like your daily routine or your life? Or do you go and research? How do you how do you stay inspired every day to go and create in your full time design job? I mean, it's hard to stay inspired every single day, I would say. Um, Sometimes you just have to get the work done. But if I am going to go look for inspiration, I really like um, Instagram for sure. Um, I follow a lot of people who hand letter and a lot of illustrators. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are things that I'm interested in. And I just like to find those things. And if I see something, even ads on Facebook or whatever, if it's something, you know, I have I know I have to do a social media post and I just like it. Then I just screenshot it and save it in a folder. Me too. <laughs> my, like phone, to my phone is, is like booked with all of these like screenshots that are like things I've saved. And I'm like, wait, what is this? What was this for? I know. Yeah. Or I'll save it, you know, on the social media channels that I run for the company, I'll save it there. So it's kind of separate from, you know, my personal things, but I'm like, Oh, I really like the way they did this quote, or I really okay. like how they have this phone on here. So I'll just constantly save those things. So I can always revert back to it. I mean, I feel like as designers, we're constantly just copying off of each other and that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. It's an evolution. You know, we're just taking old ideas and making them new. I don't, I definitely, I had a professor say one time that there's like basically nothing new under the sun yeah. and we're just ripping off of each other and making mm-hmm. it our own. And that's kind of like what's unique about it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love that. So what have you learned so far being in your 13 years of design from the beginning of your career until now, what is the biggest difference that you've seen for yourself in your growth? as a graphic designer? That's a good question. Um, I mean, for me personally, my growth has just been immense. I mean, if you've been doing it as long as I have, you can look back to when you were a a green little designer and, you know, I'm just so much better at being like, we talked about the organization. I've learned to keep organized. I've learned to keep up on communication and I've learned to keep up on um, software. I'd say that's one of the biggest things that have changed how I design is, you know, things that are constantly being released by Adobe and social media because I'm that old. Social media wasn't really a thing when I started. You didn't have social media coordinators. You didn't Mm -hmm. have um, designers who would design, uh, UI and UX designers. You didn't have that sort of thing. So that has totally evolved to learning how to become more into the digital age, because really when I started, especially in the industry, I started with furniture, I'd say they're about 10 years behind the rest of the world. Um, they're big on print and print was really my main focus. And I learned a lot in the print production that I didn't know when I started, but you know, I'd say about the last five to seven years has really shifted into digital. And I've had to learn how to design for a digital world and do social media graphics and web banners and emails Mm. and all that type of thing that like, that was never a thing when I started. Mm. And it could have been partially the industry, like I said, as well that I worked in, but it just wasn't, it wasn't important as much as it is now. Well, it's so true because it hasn't, it hasn't started shifting except for the last like 10 years, honestly, into a digital age 
of, you know, us switching, like what were the programs that you started on first? So let me, I've been dying to ask you that. I was like, what was the first one you started with? Let's hear it. Very, very first was InDesign. Um, what version? I, oh gosh. Um, CS2. <laughs> yes, you guessed it. I was CS3. <laughs> yeah, I think CS2 was in college. We had those like big old IMAX, you know, um, <laughs> that were like about this Bolted big. down to the, the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think when I started working, I was on CS3, like my first, first job was Mm -hmm. CS3. And then, yeah, from there, and it's just crazy. Like, I know (laughs) I did it. I did CS3 in college. And I remember asking, I feel so bad about this, but I need it. I was desperate. I was like, can you just pirate the versions for me? And just give me, (laughs) give me Photoshop and design and Illustrator because I just desperately need them. But I have paid my dues this since then. I have paid so much back to Adobe. I'm so sorry I did that back in the day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I was desperate. <laughs> well, we, they gave it to us free in school. It was like, you know, we're part lucky. Of yeah. Package. <laughs> yeah, it was like part of the package. And then I think I did, sorry, Adobe Pirate, probably at least Photoshop um, when I was out of school. But I was very fortunate to work for a company that, um, and I have always found a company that has done this, that finds the importance in giving your designers the software that they need. And Mm -hmm. I remember being like, oh my gosh, the release of CS4. And I just got the CD to install (laughs) into my computer. What are CDs? (laughs) (laughs) That little slot in your computer, what's that for? Oh wait, we don't have that anymore. They don't even have that anymore. I know, I know. So yeah, um, that was, it's crazy. And just how far Adobe has came with what their capabilities as well, because not only did I have that, I also worked on a PC at my first job. And Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. My internship for an entire year. I was like, what is this crap? <laughs> <laughs> I know they teach you Mac in college and you're like, Ooh, I'm going to be a Mac user. And then like not thinking, you know, the real world as you don't when you're 21 years old and you get there and you're like, Oh, I have to work on a PC. (laughs) And you have to learn the shortcuts. You're like, wait a second. These are different. (laughs) Yeah. Well, back in those days too, I mean, PCs just didn't handle Adobe products like they do now. They're so much better now. They've really came a long way. There's not much of a difference, you know, still Mac for sure. but and that's my preference, but that's my preference. And, you know, Mine too. whatever works for people. Mm-hmm. So, I'm but Adobe well. has really came a long way with Microsoft and vice versa, but man, so many crashes and so many times to restart. Have you, so ha- here's a question. So I know in my design history, like I have crashed an entire system and lost seven years worth of art files. Have you ever done anything that drastic? <sighs> no, thankfully, knock on wood. <laughs> It hasn't happened yet. I mean, I definitely lost files. I mean, that even happens now. I, I'm sure most designers can relate about InDesign crashing all the time, which still happens these days. But, and I've lost, you know, I think at my first job at the furniture store, I did lose a couple of years worth of files when we were switching things over. I can't remember now, but I wiped it clean. <laughs> I, I haven't done that, luckily. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was probably like two years into my career and I was like, I'm going to organize and clean all this stuff up because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I literally was like, uh, manager, I think I just deleted everything from seven years ago. <laughs> Thankfully, they wanted to rebrand, but I still oh, felt horrible and I thought I was going to get fired, but I didn't. That's um, good. So what are some of like the biggest things that you've had like obstacles in your career? So say like a print job doesn't go correctly or someone misinterpreted what you were trying to send them to the printer and it came out completely wrong. How do you deal with those things as a graphic designer? Well, I think that for me, I like to get all the information first. Um, I don't, I try not to assume that it's not ever my fault because sometimes it could be my fault. I've made huge mistakes before where we printed 1200 price books with the wrong pricing and that pricing, the wrong pricing was my fault. And, you know, thousands of dollars worth, uh, that had to be reprinted. But, you know, um, I think for me, the biggest thing is to learn from it and to just get all the information as to what happened. Was it the printer? Was it us? Is it the paper? Is it the art files? Is there something I need to adjust further? Um, to, you know, not have that happen again. So, and then learn from it, make notes of it for next time. Um, it could be something, you know, that 
you didn't uh, <clears throat> know that it happened or that you're not going to remember because you don't do it again for another six months. You know, um, I ran projects that were quarterly. So every four months I do something and, you know, you I always would make notes, create steps. Like, so every time I wasn't having to relearn what I was doing. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh man. It, it's, it's so crazy how all the things that we learn throughout our journey and like what makes us and up levels us as designers. I know there are like skill sets that we have learned throughout the years that I never thought I would have to learn. I know you're really good at proofreading. And so what are some other skills that you've like acquired that aren't necessarily in a creative aspect? Yeah, proofreading for one, for sure. I actually had a boss that gave me um, great advice that I still do to this day. If it's something that I need to proof, you know, as designers, it's hard for us to proof things because we look at it so much. Mm -hmm. And um, we were doing catalogs and she told me to read everything upside down. So interesting because if you read it upside down, then you're really trying to read what it says and you're more likely to catch typos or, you know, misspellings or anything. Um, so I, if I, I know it's something that, you know, really needs to be proofread and gone over with fine tooth comb, then I'll read it upside down. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say the other things that I've picked up along the way are project management skills for sure. That's definitely not anything um, that I personally, as a designer in college thought that I would be doing, you know, exactly. like, you didn't even think you'd have to learn something like someone would do it for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the thought, I don't think the thought ever even crossed my mind, you know, to be like, they well, need to have a course. Honestly. They really do. They really do. I mean, I, I don't know about your school. They made us take like a marketing class, like no, one, one marketing anyone. class. <laughs> I took yeah. sculpture and like 3D art and drawing and I was like well how does that relevant to my job right now I know all the fine art classes you're like okay great thanks yeah yeah I, don't um, think I had a marketing class I didn't even think I even had a business class honestly they made us take one one marketing class and then I did take some for electives I took some business classes as my electives um you know I, think I, I took communication is what I took in art yeah. history <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. What is art history going to do for me in my 2020 career? Hey, art history minor, just like art history. So. I do. <laughs> it helps me read books. <laughs> <laughs> helps me sound really smart in conversations. You know? Exactly. I can write a uh, graduate level art thesis paper. <laughs> I did <laughs> take a couple of the, so I, idiot me in school. I took um, an art history, a couple of art history graduate level courses. And I, I'm pretty, I bombed the first couple, but then I got good at it. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm a, I could already be a graduate as an undergraduate. Thanks. <laughs> right here, art history grad. <laughs> yep. So what else have you learned, you know, throughout the, these extra skills? So you have project management and copywriting, anything else? Yeah, that you marketing for sure. Um, marketing. A lot of overlap in marketing. I would say to any graphic designers out there, like brush up on some marketing skills. You know, the analytical side is definitely not me. Um, but there is a lot of overlap, especially if you're an in-house designer and you're one of the few in-house designers. And maybe the only other person is, a, is your manager. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of marketing that you have to learn and the right type of language to use and and why you say, you know, if anyone has ever done um, advertising before, why you say half off instead of 50 percent off, you know, things mm -hmm. like that that come along um, as in marketing in the way people buy. And especially if you're working for a company that sells a product that you have to design advertising for, mm -hmm. you're going to want to know marketing. So um, I've learned behaviors. A lot that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love it. Well, um, I have a couple other questions. So what other ways do you get inside of like your creative zone when you go to your job? Like, do you have like a meditation morning or do you have a painting morning? Like, what do you do to get in your creative zone? So I just try to really focus on, you know, my tasks for the day. And um, we talked about project management. You and I are both huge Asana fans. Um, yes. <laughs> Asana is my favorite. <laughs> no. Love it. Um, so, you know, getting coffee um, is definitely a huge. Oh, my gosh. Part. I miss our coffee walks. <laughs> no, me too. I walks around the block, which, you know, can't even happen anymore because we're all in at our house working. So, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, um, getting coffee, sitting down, looking at my tasks for the day, um, you know, and just kind of assessing like what my goals are for the day and what I need to get done. Um, we have a meeting every Monday to go over what our goals are for the week. And that's a good way for me to kind of get in the mindset of what I want to do. Um, you know, <clears throat> if it's something creative, like I said, just go and look for inspiration. Um, first might scroll through Instagram a little bit to look at some stuff um, and just kind of get in that mindset. I mean, to be honest, I really don't do a whole lot because I'm always so busy at work. It's kind of just like hit the ground running every morning. Um, there's stuff that needs to be done. So, yeah, I understand <clears throat> that. Definitely. I've had I've had my share of both sides of it, you know, where I had time in the morning to, you know, relax a little bit. And then mm -hmm. I've also had like 8 a.m. No time to think. Go. <laughs> Ready, yeah. set, go. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I walk my dog in the mornings and, and then, you know, get ready and get to work because, um, you know, I've been fortunate where we have not been, we're busier than ever because, you know, mm -hmm. we're marketing. So we still have things to do and things to market. And, um, you know, if anything, for our department, we've been busier than ever. Mm -hmm. So it's just get up and go. Yeah. What are some of your artistic influences? Who are some of your favorite artists that you really like? Oh man, put me on the spot. And it doesn't have to be in design. It can be in anything. Like I am a lover of Marilyn Monroe and Chanel. I'm a little bougie. I like fancy brands. <laughs> Well, I do follow all of those on Instagram for sure, because I love just their aesthetics. You know, any fashion designer, I love Christian Siriano. He's been really mm -hmm. big in the news right now. And I just, I think he, I love him overall as a person. And I just love his design aesthetic as well. Like what he creates is amazing. Um, I feel like we watched him grow up, especially on Project Runway, because I mean, he's close to our age. And yeah. when we were watching and we were watching him in college and we're like, Oh, this guy, we hope he wins. And then now he's like this big designer and yeah. he kind of watched his journey over the last 10 years. For sure. For sure. Um, him and Zach Posen, I love both of them. And I just love Zach's aesthetic as well. I mean, he just creates beautiful, beautiful designs. So I'm real into them. Um, there's several hand letters. I can't, of course, think of any <clears throat> off the top of my head. Um, but we I could add them to the list. You can send them to me later and we'll, <laughs> okay. everybody will have them in the description below for sure. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so yeah, there, um, I actually, I think her name is Martina. Anyway, I saw her at Adobe max, um, just this past, uh, fall and she's incredible. She, and she taught a class at max, like how to hand letter. Mm -hmm. Um, I just love her. And she was like the sweetest, nicest person ever too. Um, so I get, I love following anyone who does any of that. I follow just kind of overall, like illustrators um there's a couple of like um profiles on instagram like illustrations best that'll just post all different kinds of artists so mm -hmm. i really like any of that anything that's watercolor if we're talking about big artists of course i i love monet he's one of my favorites mm -hmm. um so i don't know anything that i like i don't really you know it doesn't have to be a certain type it doesn't have to be you know a certain form of art or whatever just whatever i like whatever inspires you. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you face in your career, you know, like right now? And what do you think you'll face guests going forward in the next five years? Uh, biggest things as a graphic designer? Well, I think a lot of it is competition, especially here in Nashville. As you know, um, there's a lot of people getting into graphic design and wanting to get in. Um, I think some of the biggest challenges I face in our industry is there's so many new graphic designers that want to take pay that's a lot less than what we would want to make having experience. And it's hard to find, you know the right job that wants to pay you for mm -hmm. your or the jobs that you want they've been there for 20 years and they're not ready to leave yes yes that too for sure um there's a lot of competition in nashville you know there's a lot of people that want to live here and move here and i totally don't blame them because nashville is awesome but that is one of the um you're you one know. of them and so am i we both i know here i know that's you know that's <laughs> we <one> contributed <laughs> i know 
I, you know, I definitely took, you know, someone else's job, <laughs> maybe that lived here forever and was trying to get a job. Who knows? Maybe not. Hopefully not. But, you know, that is kind of one of the negatives about living in a place that everyone else wants to live. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of competition. And, you know, it, it can be hard for a seasoned designer um, to really show your skills and be like, Hey, I, I do know what I'm talking about. You know, you can put it all on paper, but with design until you really see the person design, you don't really know what you're getting a lot of the time. So exactly. it can be hard, especially if you're looking for a career change or, you know, anything like that. Um, another challenge is just not getting burnt out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so true. So real. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's not something that they tell you in school. You think that you're going to be like this amazing creative designer and you don't realize that a lot of times your designs will be delegated by someone else who does not have a design degree or, you know, but they run the company or they are put in that position to tell you, you know, what looks best. And you might not always agree that, you know, you want your, you know, design to be taken seriously and your knowledge to be taken seriously. And a lot of times it might not be. So you have mm -hmm. to deal with that as a designer and take direction and, you know, kind of take that with a grain of salt. I know we've had plenty of conversations about art school preparing you for, you know, know, constructive criticism. Oh my so. gosh. It's a whole nother level. You just don't know until you experience it and yeah. then you get in it and you have to build some thick skin. You know, I, I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned throughout the years is like, you know, it's not personal. It's about the company. It's about the business and you can't take it personally. You can't have your emotions tied to your design. You kind of have to let it be more objective and be like, okay, I accept these changes. I'll make it work and change it into something that is going to work for. That's going to be a successful campaign for the company. Yeah. I mean, you're designing for the company. They are paying you to do that. And, you know, you can try to give your input when, you know, they ask for it, but ultimately, you know, a lot of times it's not going to be your decision. And there might be times where you're like, well, I don't really like this. And it's like, well, that's fine. Then don't put it in your portfolio. If you don't mm -hmm. like it, you know, <laughs> try to not do everything's going to be so, our aesthetic. I mean, yeah. and the, the people who run the company, they, they don't always know what mm -hmm. they, a, what they want. Mm -hmm. And they yes. don't know how to articulate that to us. And yeah. then you just have to basically, I've known so many times I've created so many drafts and be like, okay, pick one. And then they finally get it narrowed down, but it it took them seeing it on paper to be like, oh, I don't like this, but I like this. And they don't know how to articulate that to you before you put all that work in. And you're like, ugh. What is yeah. this? <laughs> or, you know, they're a visual person too. So they want to see it before they decide on what they want. So you have to kind of design blindly and be like, yep. okay, well, here's what I think looks good. And then they're like, no, I don't like that. And you have to change it and change it. Yep. It might end up being something completely different. I mean, that happens all the time. So I feel like I'm a mind reader. <laughs> we definitely become mind readers for sure. You just kind of start to understand. Out, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like, it, I feel like that's an extra skill that you have to learn is an observation skill yes. and an understanding for who your boss is or your coworkers or the people that own the company and really mm -hmm. understanding, okay, these are the aesthetics that they like. And I know that they're going to lean towards and you have to learn that human behavior. Yeah. I really think you have to, you know, be a step ahead of what they're thinking and just kind of be able to, because some people can't be direct with you. They think it's better to be passive aggressive or not, you know, they don't want to hurt feelings or anything like that. And going back to the tough skin, I mean, for me, I just want to know, you know, what it is that you want and or don't want. And that's Fishy. fine. <laughs> it's not going to hurt my feelings either way, you know, so you kind of have to be a step ahead and, and read between the lines and be like, okay, this person is not wanting to really be direct with me and tell me what it is they want. So I have to be like, what did, what is it that you like about this? What mm -hmm. is it that you don't like about this? Okay. We can go from there. That's totally fine. You know, that's, it's hard to design for friends sometimes because of that. Um, that's definitely yes, a lesson family. I learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really a lesson I learned, um, very early in my career is that designing for friends, you think it's going to be great and you love that they came to you and asked you, but 
they don't always want to be honest with you if they don't like something, especially because you have that friendship. And, you know, that's something I've learned over the years to maybe keep that separate. <laughs> yep. I have, I have done a lot less for friends and family just because of that, that per se, um, mm-hmm. it, it just, it just leads down a complicated road. And, and the friends that I do work with, I'm like, look, you're going to have to be very honest. We, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I promise. Like I'm not like, and, and that's one thing I want like a lot of designers to know is just like, you really can't take things personally. That's the biggest yeah. like, takeaway. Yeah. Don't take it personally. 100%. Like, people, you need people to be honest with you. So it's efficient and you're not wasting eight months on a project that could have taken two weeks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that right there is a waste of your time in your life. And that's miserable. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And get half of your money up front, at least. <laughs> Contracts for sure. <laughs> Yes. Getting paid for sure. Especially if you're doing freelance. Um, that's another thing with designing for friends that can happen. You know, you, you, you just, Oh, I'll pay you. And you know, Oh, that's fine. Pay me when you get paid. And then that you never get paid. <laughs> never get paid. <laughs> and that's like some of your best work that you've just done for free. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. Glad and you like that. Perfect. You better get that signed. <laughs> I know. So now freelance, you know, any freelancers out there, I recommend at least half the money up front um, because then at least, you know, even if you don't get paid the rest and I'm sure other designers can relate. There's literally memes upon memes about it getting paid. Oh my gosh. Design humor is probably the best one on Instagram that like literally depicts all the things that us as designers deal with on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There was, there was one this morning. Did you see the one where it had all the pictures of the, the couples? And then it was like engineer, accountant, and each one of them were unique couples with like the husband and wife or whatever. And then there was the designer. It was basically the designer. They photoshopped themselves in front of themselves and then had a picture of themselves holding. And that's basically like, it's just me and my life. Yeah, <laughs> it's just me. And it's hard too, because if you're not a designer, they don't know what we do. And, you know, I have a brother who's a mechanic and we can relate to, you know, something that takes him 30 seconds to do that he, you know, might charge a hundred bucks for, you know, I'm of course exaggerating, but you know, it's a skill that you learn that other people can't do. But even though it's not something that's like tangible that, you know, they see right in front of them happening, they're like, well, why are you charging me this much money? And it's like, well, I do have a lot of knowledge and experience and skills. And just because I can do something really, really quickly, you know, doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to be really cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a really good lesson for a lot of designers to really learn and, and companies to educate themselves on like a designer who's been in the industry for 15, 20 years, they put in the work and they, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like everybody can be skilled. Like even a first year designer can be skilled, but there's a lot of more skill sets that that other person has acquired and they can get it done in five minutes instead of three hours, four hours, or however, depending on like, you know, what other level that other designers had. So Yeah. And able to take direction. I definitely um, have worked with some younger designers before that I pick up on, you know, taking direction is not one of their strong skills. And I do think that that's built with over time, you know, nothing against them. They're young and they still have to learn that. Like I said, back in design school, you're taught that you're going to be this like incredible (laughs) creative designer and get to do whatever you want. And then you get in the real, real world and one of your coworkers is saying, no, I don't like that font that you chose. And no, we need to try a different picture. And, you know, um, you know, learning to take direction and listening to that, you know, is something that comes with being an experienced designer. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what would your ultimate dream project be? If you could ever like do anything and everything, unlimited budget, unlimited space, what would be your design project that you would absolutely love to do and just like showcase to the world? I mean, it would definitely probably be something in the fashion industry, you know, (laughs) yeah, if it was something that like, you know, window designs for, you know, whatever Saks Fifth Avenue or, you know, whatever. I just think that would be so awesome having to do window displays, things like that. I mean, that's like dream job, I feel like, or, you know, art direction for, you know, Vogue or whatever, anything like that would be incredible. That's definitely, you know, dream job. I think our dreams are the same. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I definitely love to do design in, in the fashion industry. And that that is kind of like, you know, what my heart's at too, for sure. Yeah. So last two questions as we wrap it up, what is some of the best advice that you've been given throughout the years? Um, I think the best advice I was given, um, well, for one reading proofreading upside down, like I said, that is one Mm -hmm. of the things that really stuck with me. Um, and just trying to think, I mean, I can't think of any, you know, one instance where someone was like, here's some advice, blah, blah, blah. But Mm -hmm. really lessons learned would just be, you know, Mm -hmm. um, take everything with a grain of salt. Um, do the best that you can do, um, you know, come to work every day and give it your best effort and really just learn that not every design has to be magical, you know, especially, Mm -hmm. um, if you are a full-time designer at an agency or in house, um, you know, sometimes there's going to be stuff that you're like, well, I don't love this, but I have a deadline and this needs to be posted and this will work, you know, and not everything has to be the most incredible thing that you've ever done, you know, because in your lifetime, you know, you're going to come up with some stuff that you're really, really proud of. And that's awesome. But when you do it every day, you know, sometimes you're like, okay, here's this social media post done. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Well, I think you answered my last question. You know, what is the advice you would give to others in the industry? And (laughs) those are some really good takeaways for sure. Well, I appreciate you coming on this episode and thank you for talking to us all things about graphic design and give us an insight of, you know, what it's like on a day in and day out basis, daily basis and inspiration. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, say bye to Merle for me. Give him a little, a little hug and squeeze. We'll put a picture of him um, in the Insta (laughs) story so y'all can all see Merle. He's so cute. (laughs) He's the best dog ever, but I might be biased. Uh, I'm biased too. He's so cute. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. And I hope you have a good day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.